is go for Python developers or for Pythonistas. My name is Alexandre, but you can call me Alex. It's way easier. And I am not Pythonista at Head Head. Uh, well, uh, before I start, I, I should uh, explain how it worked. I will show a small presentation, uh, some couple of slides, to introduce uh, the difference of Python and, and Go. After, I will uh, do some uh, examples, so if you can, you can uh, learn a little bit of Go. Uh, my, my goal is not to say if Python is better or if Go is better. No, it's just to you to learn the differences between the languages and after you can choose by yourself which language you think is better. A uh, couple of questions. Who works with Python? Who knows Python? Everyone? Uh, does anyone know Go or work with Go? Heard of? Okay, so let's begin. Uh, the history of the Go language, it started at Google uh, in 2007, and it was uh, the main, the people that it started was Robert, Rob Pike, and Ken Thompson. You can find some really good talks on YouTube of these guys. The first uh, public, Public release was in 2009, and the first stable release, ACA 1.0, it was in 2012. And why a new language? Why should we? Why? So the main reasons for a new language that it it was difficult for Google. At that time, in 2007, the main language it was uh, Java and C++. So back that time, you didn't have Rust or other new languages. So the main reason was the frustration with existing languages. Uh, C++ wasn't as easy as other languages, and Python wasn't as fast as other languages. So it started to become too difficult to develop new code at Google. And after uh, many years without any new languages, uh, they started to think it's time for us to rethink and create a new language. And the main, re the main reason of Go is uh, to take advantage of networking and multi-core processors because this is something that was growing in 2017 and now you can see that everything runs on web and even your cell phone is 8 core. So <coughs> features, some features of Go, it compiles to, to machine code and also compiles to WebAssembly. This is WebSymbol is very new, and it's a language that is memory safe. Uh, you is memory safe because you have no buffer overflows or no pointer arithmetic, arithmetic, and there is garbage collector. And one of the biggest features of Go is concurrency. Go versus Python. Code organization. This is something that people struggle with when they come from Python and go to Go. Because code organization in Go is a little bit different. Right now, uh, in older versions, for example, 1.10 or even 1.11, you keep everything in the single workspace. That's the go path environment variable that defaults to your home path slash go. And you keep your source files and your binary files inside that path. 
uh, a workspace contains multiple repositories. It means everything is inside that specific path. And usually the imperf path is the package loca location inside your workspace. I, after, I will show how does it look like inside uh, the Go workspace so you can understand a little bit better what does it mean your, your import path is your workspace path. But this is going to change with the package management. Right now, there is no official tool yet. Actually, there is, is an official tool yet, but it's not fully released. It's just preliminary support in Go 1.11. And it will be released as the standard tool in Go 1.13 in August 29. And you won't need GoPath anymore for your source code. It will be only used for your binary code when you install uh, application. And right now, the tools that you can do package management, uh, there is uh, DAP, that is the official experiment. The DAP was the experiment for a new tool in the, the Go language. And there is GoDAP, GoVendor, Glide, and many others. <coughs> Biggest difference is object orientation in Go. You will see that there is no class, no enrentes, no genericus, but there is interface composition and type embedding. And you can do object-oriented programming with just this. Pointers. Something very different is you have pointers in Go. You will find pointers in C and in, in C++, but not in Python as the way in C. So everything in Go is, is passed by value. Uh, no pointer arithmetic is. This is why it makes uh, Go a safe language. Uh, pointers are represented by asterisk. Uh, it's also used to the, the, the reference. Uh, uh, umpers returns the memory address. And there is the new keyword. But we don't have a free keyword because Go manages with the garbage collector the, when your object is destructed. Concurrence. This is, I think, the best thing in Go. There is Go routines and channels. Go routines are, most people say, lightweight threads because they share the same address space. Uh, it's, it's not a, a real thread, but Go routines run inside multiple OS threads. Channels are the way to communicate between these Go routines. Because when you have threads, you need to synchronize these threads in a way. And channels are the way you synchronize uh, information across your Go routines. What else is different from Python? You have no, decoration, no decorators, no named or optional arguments, no iterators, no generation, no list comprehension, no dict comprehension. There is no exceptions. You don't have try catch. You have error, error as in Rust. And also, Go is part of the C family. And you also have labels and go to in Go. So your first program in Go will be the hello world. And some differences. Uh, you can see it looks like C. You have the function main. You have print new line with the hello world. You have the import statement to import uh, the format package to print something. And your files will always start with the package something. If if it's the entry part of your application, it must be package main. But if it's uh, a library, you can name uh, the name of your library. Uh, another example of code. 
uh, factorial in Python. You can see that factorial in Go is very similar. There is, it's just you have practice and uh, types, but you can see uh, if return uh, the definition and the way it works, it's exactly the same. It just have a little more of a little bit more of code. Uh, Fibonacci with uh, generators. Since Go has no generators, you can do the same approach with Go routines and channels. You can see the, the code will look very, very similar. For example, uh, explaining a little bit, you have the package, you have the imported, it, the Fibonacci function. You see yield A, I, the C is a channel, and I just send uh, the value of E to the channel, and it's the channel I have. I have this for, and it iterates over the channel, and will print out as the same way as in a generator in in Python. And that's it. What I I had to show you the differences. Now, let's start to write some real code. Yeah, uh, channel is a, a keyword, and you need to specify the type of the the channel. For example, this channel is it's an integer type. You can only send ints to that channel. So, if you have any other questions during uh, the the code that I will show, you can raise your hand and ask. Don't need to wait until the end of the the presentation. I will try to explain a little bit better uh, showing uh, Go routines and channels running. So, okay, it's time to do some code. Does everyone has uh, Golang installed or Docker? If you don't, you can use the Go Playground and you can copy and save your 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 code if you don't have code. It's a little bit. Uh, can you can you see it? Uh, ver or it's for me. It doesn't look like it's something is. It's not as it should be. So I. I'm going to sh start showing. Yes, 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 I can. Uh, hmm. I'll control shift plus. Yeah. It's it's good for everyone. Okay. So let's start showing some code. <coughs> so the uh, okay, uh, just one moment. It's better now? Yeah, uh-huh. So uh, going back to to our channels and 
And I, I think after before I let's see. Hmm. Okay, go path is not set. That's something interesting. Anyway. So as I said, our, our first line will be the package and some name if it's as it's at the entry point it it is the domain. And Okay, so this is, uh, I, I think there's some problem with the video, it's, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, worse. Uh, yeah, I, I can just change. Now you can see, right? Yeah. Uh, well, how? Let's un understand the code that printed that out. You you have the channel. C is a channel and we create a channel with make chan int. The, this go keyword, this is what start uh, a go routine. You can, if you remove it, it's just a normal function. But if you apply the go keyword, it will start this as Routine. <coughs> so, <coughs> what does it does? This go routine. It iterates, iterates over from zero to ten, and every time, every iteration, I send the number plus one to s to the channel C. And when we finish this iteration, we close the channel. And the four here, it's iterating over the channel C. And every time it receives uh, a new integer, it will print out. So that's why it prints one, two, to 10. This Oh here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here it's because you're you're calling the function. Uh, it's a call. It, 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 this is a anonymous function. I for example I can change this and and put here and give it a name. Uh, And call here. What? If you uh, define it as a uh, name function, you, uh, you have to uh, give the channel as an argument to the function. Yes, very good. Very good. <laughs> I forgot that. 
Yes, let's see if it works. Yes, I forgot to put C here. So it works the same way. It's just uh, it was an anonymous function. So let's let's do something. So let's start explaining the how channel works. Uh, so this is a channel. And we use the make keyword to create a new channel. And you have the channel and you want to send something to that channel. You can use this to send. This means I'm sending something and I will send I will send one to that channel. So let's let's try to run this and see what will, will happen. We have an error, a deadlock. Why? Because we have a channel, it's unbuffered, it means someone needs to consume that channel. If no one is listening to that channel, you will have a deadlock because Go is very good in detecting uh, this, this case. So, okay, let's, let's read it. We're going to read uh, to white. This means uh, to receive something. So I receive uh, any message in the channel C, and I will save it to I. And it is still not going to work. And OK, OK. This is something that I I always do uh, because I work more with I work with Python and I forgot the imports sometimes because you don't need to import anything to print in Python. So uh, sometimes I will forgot uh, brackets or imports or other things. It still does not work because e is i is undefined, so we need to declare y. We declare y, and it will receive. No, this uh, this is uh, implicit de declaration. I I can change this and and do this. So if it looks a little better. Ah. Okay, so it's not a channel type, it, so it's better to use this way, it's easier. <coughs> Is it still, we still have deadlock. Why? Because it's, it's a channel and it's synchronous. So it will be locked after this. This won't run. So we need to make Another chain. Just we create a go routine to set. Now it works because we're not locking our main function. It runs. It runs inside the goroutine. So you start the main function and it spawns a goroutine, and you you are waiting for something here. You are waiting for a message, and after you get a message in the channel, it will execute the next line, that is our print new line. 
if I remove this, so this will, this will just wait forever for someone, but we don't have a producer, we just have a consumer. If I run it again, I will have a new deadlock. This is something to keep in mind. You always need to have a producer and a consumer, unless you create a buffer channel. So you can have some messages in the channel without any, without any consumer. You can publish, but no one is listening. It will, it will work because we have a buffer. <coughs> it works. I, I have a goroutine that sends a mess to a channel and no one is listening to that channel. But since our, our channel is buffered, we can have one message in our channel without any consumer. If I, I try to do it again, send another, it won't work because our buffer is just for, oh, it works. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's because the, the it's a go routine and it, it was locked. So yeah, now it does not work because I send one message but the second time that we, it will try to send the message, it won't work because it's blocked by the first message that no one is listening. <laughs> so I sent two messages and why it only prints one? Because it only reads once. If we want to read multiple times, we need to add a for loop. Well, it prints out one in two, but I get a deadlock again. Why? Because our iteration over C is locked because we didn't close our channel. So after you finish sending messages, you can close a channel. And now it works without a deadlock because uh, the for loop it will range over C, it will iterate, it will iterate over the channel until the channel is closed. If that channel is not closed and no one is publishing a new message in it, the the range, the for loop will be in a deadlock state. He is waiting, but no one is publishing to it. So it, that's why it, it uh, raises an exception, or throw an error, like panic, not raising an exception. Ask. Um, no, I was just uh, asking about the deadlock error. So is it coming from the compiler, or is it a runtime error? Is the compiler detecting? No, error? no, this is, this is runtime. Okay. This is runtime. Uh, the compiler error, if, for example, import, for example, import sync, we're not using sync. You can, you can do, uh, I had to import, uh, this is something that is not very popular. You can change, you can change to do this way as well. And it's very similar to Python. You can import multiple instead, instead statements in the same line. So now I try to compile and we get an error while compiling. It's imported and not use it. Sync. Go, the Go compiler is, is very strict in, in some things. For example, 
you, you can have undefined functions or un not use it, not undefined, not use it, variables not use it, imports not use it. So you see that the compiler does a lot of thing, things trying to prevent you of writing some bad code. You can get this same in, for example, in other languages, you get warnings, or in Python, you don't get nothing. You just run the code. Unless you, you run PyLint, you will receive a lot of warnings. But in Go, it's not a warning. It's an error. So your code doesn't compile if you have um, you know, things that are you know, not use it. OK. Uh, does anyone has questions so far? Wants uh, maybe a better explanation of something that I maybe missed? Or everyone understands how a channels and go routines works? OK. Mm -hmm. uh, you still have the previous example with the loop, uh, where you had 10 numbers sent to the channel. You still have the source code? This? It, so I tried to copy the <coughs> go loop C uh, call twice. So I have two lines with go and loop, but I don't get 20 numbers out of the I just get 18. Uh, do you know what, uh, what's wrong? If, if you cop yes, like this. Okay, let's see the output. Did, did, did you get this error? So what happened here? Why did I, I get send on close channel? Because we have, we have two go routines running using the same channel. And inside our function, we close that channel. You, you can close on a channel until you don't need it anymore. And for example, the, Probably the first Go routine will run faster than the second one. And it will close the, the, the channel while the, the second Go routine is still trying to publish to that channel. Uh, so a closed uh, channel cannot be used anymore? No, if you close it, it can be used anymore. It can be used? No, it, so can, it, it can't be used. Be used yeah. It cannot be used. It, it's like closing a connection and trying to publish to that connection. I just didn't get the error message. Is it possible that I have a different version of Go compiler or something? No, because the Go, one thing about Go is that Go doesn't break things between versions. Mm -hmm. It tries to not break. Sometimes you can see a small change in some some libraries, but it's very difficult to break, for example, this, this way it works in minor chains. For example, we have, uh, we have always uh, new things in newer versions, not things that you have backward compatibili compatibility. So if you wrote your code for, for Python 1.0, it should it still works for 1.11. But if you write your code for 1.11 and trying to run it in 1.6, it probably you have some missing features added in newer versions. So I, 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 I don't understand why you don't have this, this error. It's like a resolution issue. So you have two scripts uh, no. reading from a, uh, from a channel. The first 
that closes the channel wins, so one yes. writes some, some, so maybe that's why he's uh, having a different yeah, but uh, output, because... Uh, no, you can, you can try to run it. Oh! Of course. Now it, it didn't. It depends not only... Ha! <laughs> that's... <laughs> you, you will have a different uh, result each time. That's yes, okay. sometimes the, the runtime can <laughs> notice. Oh, there is... Surprise, surprise. Yes, I'm surprised. Uh, for example, here it, it just printed for 1 to 10. So the second thread didn't even start to run because uh, when you close the channel, the, the range, the for loop will break. And we, as you can, we we don't have anything waiting for the the second the second one. We so why does it reinstantiate a second time the the loop function? Mm -hmm. Because you close it, so you run the loop function once, and then you close it, and then why isn't it running it again? <coughs> Sorry. I close. Yeah, so if you go down to where it says the go loop, see? Yeah, twice. So why doesn't it run it once? And if it closes, run it again. When you close it, when you close no, because you, you close channel, does it you close, close it? You close it you close it this 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 channel. Mm -hmm. So if this one run first and this will try to run after uh, we have this for loop that is uh, waiting for messages. And if the channel is closed, the for loop will break its execution and it will, it will exit. So what happens if I remove this? Probably it won't. Oh, OK. OK. <laughs> that's, that's it. It doesn't print anything. Why? Because we're not waiting for the go routines. The go routines take some time. Takes some time to spawn. So if you if you're not waiting for it, it will it will uh, the program will exit without waiting for it. So let let's try. Uh, I, I'm not sure how can I, okay, let's, let's, let's do something different. So this is something that I explained, I, I have an example here. This is our programs that runs and exits without printing go and there is there is no no channels here it's just it's just uh, it's just a go routine and if you run it won't print anything but we can change this to become this. So why this does? We have our our channel, we have our go routine, we have our print. And when we finish the print, we send a message to the channel saying okay too. And it it is waiting here until it receives a message. So now it, it it will print the because we need to wait in in some way we need to wait the go routine to execute so after the execution of the go routines we can uh, it, we can let the the program is it it's like running a thread and after you spawn a lot of threads you do thread dot join 
So you wait the, the threads to run until it's finished. And after you finish running all threads, you can continue your execution or uh, is it your code. You can wait with a wait group as well. It's so this is this is the the same version of this wait, but with a wait group. So you don't have a channel. You just create a wait group and you add something. For example, we're starting spawning one go routine, so we add one for it and we after the go go routine runs we just do with group dot done to say remove that value, remove on value from this weight group. And here we do the weight group dot weight that is the same as uh, thread dot join. So <coughs> if we we run wait it does the same thing. And what if I add two go routines and wants to so it only it only printed one because we added only one value. So we have two go routines. We add two values to the wait group because we are waiting for two go routines. Yes. So you have you can see that we got go again and go. So there is no order for execution of which one will print first. It, it is which one gets look and run first. I don't remember if it will work. Yes, it works. Uh, what if I want to have a defined order of execution? Huh? Sorry? Uh, I want to have a defined order of execution. Order. I Whoa. Always uh, <laughs> to have uh, uh, the output of the first print line, uh, and then always, uh, and then the print line for the end. This is a very good question. I never try to to control the execution order of go routines. Yes, but I'm not sure how could I. I die. But if if you want to the second go routine to to wait for the first to print, there is no no reason to use a go routine. If you <laughs> if you <laughs> maybe, maybe there, are, there are some actions uh, uh, in, uh, in both routines uh, before and after, and uh, at some point uh, uh, the second uh, routine has to wait for the first routine. Yeah, but if it do you do this with threads? Usually, no. You don't wait for one thread to run to run the second thread. So I I I can think in a way that I could write some code that would make it wait for. I I can think in a way, but it's it's messy. So I think that's not the point of go routines. It you try to spawn and don't wait for. Uh, for another go routine to run, you can synchronize. Uh, you can synchronize some communication between it. So, so any questions so far? Any other questions? This. Isn't it a function call or? No, this. Why this? 
It's because it's a strict. strict. So we, we create a new instance. So I, I shall, so I, I should uh, show some, some, uh, how does it works, uh, classes and these things. So if no one, if anyone, or if there is no any questions about, about channels and functions, I will show other, other features because, uh, for example, I I learned Go after working with Python for many years, and the most difficult concept to understand is channel and Go routines. If you work works with Python, C, Java, or if you have worked with uh, multiple languages in your life, the other things will look the same. They they have the same the same meaning the same. It's like this, the same way, but you just write your code a little bit different. For example, if where is the your for here? It's different from Python. But if you work with C sharp, C, C plus plus, Java, this looks exactly the same. So the the different concepts are hard to understand on new languages if you try a new language. So, let's write some some classes. If I can share, it's not on GitHub, but there is a way to upload to SCAD. I can upload there or send an email uh, to SCAD to everyone that was. Uh, subscribe. So, if you want to receive that email, you need to go to my talk in SCAD and check that uh, you were in this room. So, if I send an email, you will receive the email with the link. Uh, okay. Pam, pam, pam. So let's do some objective-oriented stuff. So what features a duck have, has? I know that a, a duck does quack. What else <laughs> I could add to, to my? So we have an empty struct here because our duck has no attributes yet. But a duck can have a color, right? What else a duck could have? A size, maybe. And our, our duck does quack. So we create a new duck. And we can we can specify for example the color in this way, color white. And the size of the duck is 
don't know, 50 centimeters. Or you can specify a duck and also this way. Omit, you can omit the, the values, but you need to follow the order here. So sometimes is you have a lot of parameters, and if you do this, and if you add something new to your to your duck, uh, it won't compile to some uh, changes. So here I could change, for example, it doesn't matter the position where it is, if it is size or if it's color. But if you if you omit the the names, you have a problem with uh, position, so it becomes positional. So we need to follow the position. And we can call, you can tell our duck to quack. OK, uh, so let's run in and see if it does quack. It, it does quack. And we can print our object. Okay, we can we can we can print our uh, duck color, for example, and duck dot color. Ah, okay. It's not printing a line. Forget this. Okay, or the color is white. Okay, we. What did I do? It print out. It prints out the R struct. So there is a special that is this hashtag V that you can print your structure in a nice way, like this way. I can print out it. It values entirely what is inside this this duck. So we can see that the color is white and the size is 50. What types of duck we have? I, I can create an interface. And I can say that this interface, the duck does quack. And as in Python, in, in Go, you have duck typing. So what is duck typing? If a duck does quack, if the object does quack, it's a duck. Right? If in Python you implement a class and this class has the quack uh, function or method, you can call this class dot quack. It doesn't matter if it's a cow doing quack or if it's a dog or if it's a duck. It doesn't matter. So it, if you implement the quack interface, for example, I, I could call this quackable. So if it's quackable, it does quack. And a duck is quackable because he does quack. So let's change a and, and let's call the quackable. And we s so uh, D is an interface. It's a quackable interface. And you will see that 
this does not work, d.color, because uh, d is an interface, and interface do not have attributes, only name of methods. So we need to remove. So our duck does not implement qua cable. Why? Because it's an interface, we need to pass a pointer. If we're using interface, you need to use pointers. So D, the variable D that we created here is an interface of qua cable. And we assign to D or pointer of duck, and if you call d.quack, it will print out quack. What else does, does quack? Any other animal? Frog. Huh? A frog. Frog? Yeah. Frog does quack? <laughs> yeah, it's no, uh. No, 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 uh, no. Something that does quack. Just to to show uh, more example. Goose, goose. Yeah, goose could can be. I'm not sure if I ever heard a goose. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not sure. So our goose will will have the same. Goose quack and the quack. So we change a little bit here just to add another. So we have duck quack and goose quack. And as, since this is a pointer, we can uh, make it a little bit understandable, maybe for some people. You can use the new keyword. Because the new keyword returns a pointer to goose. So it's the same as the previous example. This creates goose, and this returns the pointer of goose, the address. So, so far, any questions about? This is this if this has if this does the same as I'm not sure about the underlying things, but it works the same. So I'm not sure what happens if there is a big big bigger difference. <coughs> I'm not that aware. I know that new allocates something, but I'm not sure about this. So, so far we saw channels, go routines, and a little bit of object orientation. <coughs> so, I will show some examples that I have I have here. 
there is a microsite that I, I've wrote an ex as an example. I think everyone is familiar with Flask. And well, this is your <coughs> uh, Flask application that renders a template, index template. This is uh, this would be difficult to do in in pure Python, so I'm using Flask to do this. You can there are others other frameworks, but Flask is very popular, so I, I chose it. And in Go, you can see there is no need for external libraries. You can you can do it only with the template library from the standard library and with the HTTP library. Uh, it's very easy to to understand the, if it's a standard library or if it is a third-party library. For example, a third-party library, it will be usually github.com but user.repo. Or it can be other internal URL or something. There is also go pkg dot in that there are some people that use because you can control version on that. And so you always see that there is a domain. There is always a domain in third part libraries. So this on this library they do not have. So the uh, difference between here, it's very small. It, in Flask, there, in Flask, it does a lot of things to you, for you. Uh, there is the static. If there is a static folder, it will understand that the static folder is where your static files are. And that there is a template folder, it will assume that, that your templates are there. In Go, you need to specify a little bit that your handle for slash stat will be in the file server, the directory is static. And you still have your handle for the, the index. And in our index function, we create a new template we parse the file and we execute we execute renders the template so to understand for example to understand uh, the differences uh, in python we have the try accept accept we have uh, raise error and here we don't have we have if parser files fails for some reason it will return uh, it returns the template and returns an error so if if error is new it means okay we we're able to parse our file we can try to execute our template it's if not we will panic panic we will stop your application if you don't have a recover somewhere. Panic is a way to say, oh, something bad happened, and I, I, I didn't want to treat that error, so I just, I didn't knew how to treat that error, so I threw the panic. Probably you will see a lot of code when you copy paste from somewhere in the internet with panic you should you should try to 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 work with your errors not just panic because imagine this is a web this is actually this is a a web a web page a web server so imagine we're throwing 
panic in our index page. So this will stop our application. So every new request you you make will just throw an error and it will stop the execution of that request. So the the user will not have uh, some kind of uh, error handling page showing something that could be useful sometimes. We just stop the request. <coughs> so uh, let's try to to run it. So we have some some static files. We have devconf logo here. We have ein style just to make the page a little bit better. And we have our small small HTML. We have a static style, static uh, for ima the image, the logo, and we have just a small message here. <coughs> so it's listening, the server is up, and you see that printed out this and this list and in serve this blocks your current uh, your current application so if you have anything here it it won't it won't it won't run because this is locking so we can go to oh, okay to the page 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 and Okay, our, our page is, is here, it's working. But let's suppose I add a panic here after we parse our file before executing our template. It's still listening. And if we, we run, we that this page isn't working and we have our our stack printed out here because you can see here panic serving foo uh, the message that I I added here it will be printed out and also the stack of so you can you can track using the logs where it it broke as this is similar as a traceback. You can you can track it. What else? What else I have here? Uh, some very popular common that everyone does in Python is reading a file. You open your file dot text and read the lines and do a four line in lines and print out the line. And in, in Go it's not as that easy, but it's very similar. You open your file. Again, if there is an error, you need to, you need to work with that error. I, I just did panic here because it is easier for examples, but I, I could I could return and instead of an error, I I could do log dot dot. Oh, I can I can do this log dot fatal. I don't need the return. Okay, so uh, file not found for for example and. I just add the log here. So let's uh, Okay, this is the output of the file. 
is Lori Ipsum, very, very popular for testing. But as I mentioned, I can, I can work with that error and try to do something better. For example, we'll try to read file one. File one does not exist. So I get on a, a message, file not found, it starts one. But if I just do panic, panic, panic is not free anyway. Well, why not? This is this is no such file or directory. But you have your so you have your exception here. <coughs> so uh, going with our our example, what does the this? So I I open the file. I need to close the file. How it works with Python? You just use the with, and the context manager will handle the close of the file for you. In Go, there is the defer keyword. With the defer keyword, you, for example, the file is not closed here because we're still scanning and, and this will run in, into the defer, will be the same as if you add it, it here. So it defers to the end of the execution of your method. But even if, even if there is some error, like panic or something between this, the defer will execute. So it's a safe way to, for example, if you, if you add the close file dot close here, if something happens between your file will not be closed. And maybe if it's not closed, the file will be locked and no, no, no one else will, can, will be able to read. But with the defer, if something happens, you'll still be able to run it after. It's like the, it would be like the try except finally. You do the try, but finally if everything if anything didn't work, you can uh, do some something in the final. Question. So in other programming languages, uh, file handles are closed automatically when uh, finishing the program. Is it, uh, isn't it uh, here the case? Or? Yes, probably it is. Uh, I, I think that... If you forget to, uh, to close the file uh, in your source code, uh, <coughs> uh, other uh, programming languages like but Python are closing the file handles yeah, but for example, if something happens here, like a panic, your application is still running, but your application is, a, in, is in a panic state. Mm -hmm. So the application doesn't die when you, you get a panic. The p application continues to running. Mm -hmm. So you can use panic to exit something. Then, uh, then yeah, bec yeah, because if, if you get an error that we didn't yeah. tweet it, for example, this we don't have any any way to get an error here, I think. But if if we had an error, the application can get into the panic state, and you need to recover recover from for from a panic state. And if you if you don't do that, your application will be like a zombie. Sometimes it it is still there, but it does not work. So the file can be locked in that case. If you open, it had some some panic, the application is still running, the operation system will see that, oh, this file is being used by this process, but this process is not working anymore. It's just in a panic state. <coughs> any questions you had some? OK, uh, any, any other questions? Any other things that maybe you want to see, or? Ooh. Okay. I will need to look into the 
rejects rejects model because it's not uh, something that I usually do. So we have some examples here. Now this is not. Let me see if there is a good example. So we have an example here that there is an expression that I think it looks looks pretty much the same as in Python. You have this uh, the group here, valley and and you are so group key. You have the you want the words, not numbers. So if you run if you run it, we can get some it should be pretty much the same with uh, differences in name of functions, probably. The regular expression is pretty much the same. Could you please tell us something about goroutines and channels? I already showed it in the beginning. Okay. Because you, you arrived later, right? Which one it, it was this? Uh, there's one more, uh, there's one more loop in there, in the code. Sorry, there's, there's one more goal routine call. This? This has just a single one. It was this? Yeah. Yeah. So, it, it, so we had an issue that uh, uh, we had a problem with this code, right? That the data was repeating or something. No, it's not because it's repeating. You're 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 executing the same the same the same function. Okay. So so I just had one use case. It's like we in multi-threaded programming we sh share the same queue, dump the same uh, data from the from different uh, threads, Python threads into the same queue. Right? So in GoLang, I was trying to fix think about how to do that. So uh, assume that we have the same channel and we have two loops pumping uh, 10, 20 and the other loop mm -hmm. pumping in 1, 2, 3. How, how do I uh, close the channel at the end? Should I use a great loop or should I use uh, something else? Okay, you... You want to run two times it's a two different loop function you, you want to two different loop functions yeah. uh, and let this uh, pump in uh, 10 11 to 25 or And the first loop is just. Oops. In the first loop, line 7. And you want this, right? You want to run both. Yes, but line number 7, right? Uh, can you remove the plus mark? 7. <coughs> this? Yeah. OK. Uh, <coughs> So you, you want to print out this way, right? <coughs> I want to understand how to like, close the channel back up. Well, there is. <coughs> uh, 
I could write to the, this. You you want to do with just one channel or yeah, with one channel. Just two channels. because I I need another channel to or a weight group to to know when these are finished so I can break the for loop I need something else. No, it doesn't not it doesn't need to be to tell but you Yeah, it's it's a little bit it's a little bit more complex. You need something to 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 wait for. For example, I can run this but this is you getting a deadlock state as well because we didn't close the channels the channel we only have one channel so I need to have another channel to control the states so I know when these two tasks are finished or something else so how, how do I modify this? <coughs> should I apply 90? The, I the, best, the, best, the best thing it would be I I think it would be to do this. Actually, I, I have an example. Let me show it. It, it is. It is here. This example. It. It will be. I can. I can send these examples after. So you have this. Uh, so you have your go routine two and your go routine one. You can see that both are running and printing out. So what I have here, I have two channels. Oh, oh, this wasn't good. This. So I have two channels, and uh, each one for for each go routine, and I have this for loop that is like the while true. And I have to select to uh, get uh, the value from go routine one and go routine two, and as you can see here, I after I, I run the, the the for loop, I close channels, and I can see if 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 the channel is closed, OK will be false, and I set to new, and I can see after the select run if both 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 uh, channels are new. I can break the for loop and exit. So best way, I think it's with multiple channels. So what does select do? Like select, it, select is used to select multiple channels. So you can listen to multiple channels. OK, so. This was pretty much of, of what I had to show to you. So uh, let's go back. And, uh, and well, conclusion. Uh, in my opinion, Go is a simple language. Uh, there is some difference from Python that you need to get used to, but when you learn and understand that differences, is, it's quite pretty easy to work with channels and Go routines. Uh, Go is concurrent, very, very, very good for concurrence. It's a robust language, and it's also fun. Python is fun, Go is fun, C++ is, is not that fun. So uh, if, you're, if you use C, you can, you can 
try to use Go for some applications, and you see that it will be uh, probably easier to maintain and to work with your code after some time. OK, next steps. Uh, if you are interested in learning more, golang.org, that website that I showed with the packages, and there is pretty much everything about Go there. Tour.golang.org, uh, they, it's kind of interactive way of learning. You, you see some explanation, you see some code, so you, you can run it in the web browser. You don't need to, to have anything else, just a web browser to learn in to tour. Uh, there is the, the Golang forum, Golang Nudes, and the golangbook.com. There is a free book, free, a free book that you can, you can understand the, the basics of basics of the Go language. And the same author in the same website, he has uh, a paid book that you can get in Amazon or any other any other portal. So if you like the the book, uh, the free book, maybe you can help the the author with the paid version of the book that is more complex. So, thank you. If you want to talk with me, uh, I know that we finished before. We, yeah, but I, I don't have anything else. And most people left, so. If you, if you want to hang out after, we can uh, talk, uh, talk more about Go or the difference of Python. I hope that you learned something here today. And thank you. What do you do with Go? Is it uh, what, like what I do? Backend or do you do some tools? Right now, I, I don't work with Go anymore. Okay. Uh, in my in my previous job, I I mainly use it Go for uh, microservices, so backend. And also web APIs and things related with networking. Okay. Right now I'm mainly working with Python. In my uh, so. I think, uh, uh, I think uh, Go is producing a complete uh, binary with all uh, the libraries uh, uh, linked in. Yeah, so yeah that's, that's a good thing. If you, if you import anything from GitHub, from wherever, any source, and you compile your code, you just have one single file. So you, you don't have, for example, you don't need to have any uh, libraries installed on your computer because sometimes with C, you, you, to run some application, you need to have some libraries installed in, in your computer. And this sometimes is a little bit it's a problem because you're trying to run something that is incompatible with the libraries in your system. And you need to get the source and compile it by yourself. So this, this happens a lot. If you compile, if you compile, yeah, if you compile with Go for Linux, it will pretty much run everywhere. But, the, uh, but in practice, uh, I could imagine that uh, you have a continuous integration uh, of all your uh, Go applications because if there are some uh, um, uh, security fails uh, in some libraries, uh, you have to recompile your, uh, your application uh, each time and you reinstall it. Yeah, that's, that's a good practice of programming. You need to have continuous delivery and continuous integration, so you can pretty much update uh, whenever there's, there's you want. There's a new there's a library, and mm -hmm. I have to recompile it uh, by, uh, by complete uh, full application. So. What about package manager? Which one did you use and what was the experience? Uh, I, I used a lot of Go vendor in the past. Uh, it, it's not the best one. Uh, there are some big projects uh, like OpenShift, Origin, OKD. They use Glide. But Go is introducing its own package manager. So you can, you can use it as in, in the version 1.11, but it's still it's a feature flag. You need to enable it to use it fully. But in the version 1.13 in August, it 
it should be released as the standard, the standard package manager. So this is a problem that a lot of people complain about Go because Rust was born with its own package manager in the very beginning. And Go, it took, it took some time because they're, they were trying to, to get the best of the package manager. They were trying to refine because the way that uh, other package managers works, the, the Go team didn't like so much. So they were experimenting approach on how they could solve that. Any other questions? Rust, yes, this morning, on the workshop. <laughs> so it, it was my, my first time that I, I wrote some Rust code, but I just know about the language, so that's why I, I went to the workshop to learn a bit. No idea about Rust. Okay. 